All right. Good morning. Good morning. Hope all is well, guys. It's 9.29 and 30 seconds. So we have 30 seconds until the New York Open. And uh, we're going to see what happens here today. So far, we've had a really profitable London. Three trades, three winners, no losses. It's kind of nice. It, that's not the way this works, by the way. And I certainly don't. Ho I hope you don't expect that uh, to continue the way it has been. We've been on a winning streak for quite some time now. And it's just not the way trading works. I've um, just been very fortunate. And uh, I can. I promise you. We're going to have losers. We're going to have back-to-back -back losers and back-to-back -back break evens, sometimes even three, four, five in a row. And that is trading. But overall, uh, knock on wood, we shall be profitable as we typically are. All right. Um, New York's open. We are trading the NASDAQ today. For those of you who don't know, this is a 10-minute chart of NASDAQ micro futures. Uh, doesn't matter what the contract size is. They're the same, uh, essentially. Um, except for the size of the contract, obviously the multiple. But uh, price is pushing up now on the New York Open, which is uh, just fine. I'm just going to switch you over now to another screen here in a moment. Just Let me just reset some of these screens so that they look fine. You see that spike up there on the open. Nice open market action. Wow, look at that thing go. Okay, I'm going to take you back. I'm going to take you to the sisters grid. This is the four sisters. I'm going to turn it into the three sisters. I'm going to remove the DAX. We don't need the DAX index here in the New York session. I use it in the London session. And we're looking here for synchronicity, congruency, uh, and uh, possible divergence to garner ideas as to uh, possible ideas, really, uh, to what the next move might be. The yellow line that you see down here on the far left hand side is the New York Open. And the New York Open is here on the Dow, and the New York Open is here on the S&P. So NASDAQ, Dow, S&P from left to right. You'll see all three of them are moving in tandem. They're all trading above their 20 EMA on the one-minute chart, and they're all trading above the New York Open. So very much synchronous in movement here on the open. And uh, that's what we would typically expect to see. And sometimes we get a divergence, and we can garner some clues as to what that next move uh, may in fact uh, may in fact be okay. I'm going to take you back now to the um, 10 minute chart. You'll see some support and resistance zones. People are calling them czar zones just for fun. And I have some zaros, also known as arrows, <laughs> here as well. Just having some fun with words, guys. I know that this is not rocket science, far from it. Anybody can draw the support and resistance zones, but the challenge is not so much that. The challenge is extracting profits as a result of you drawing support and resistance <laughs> zones. And that's where the real game of trading comes into play, is extracting profits and um, and preventing losses from mounting. All right, we're going to watch this now for the next few minutes. I typically don't trade within the first 10 minutes of the New York Open or of the London Open for that matter. I sometimes do, and you will see videos on my YouTube channel when I do. And when I do, it's because there's a very specific pre-market setup or some very specific action happening on the one-minute chart. This is the one-minute chart here. It's got some funny indicators on it. I was testing some things just for fun in between sessions, and those are still there. Okay, now we got it. There's one EMA, it's the 20 EMA on the ten on the one minute chart. And that's all I use, uh, really. Uh, I sometimes will look at VWAP too, and we'll do some VWAP trades as well. And that's available to you on my YouTube uh, channel. I'll tell you what, I'll flip you over to, to VWAP right now, because something interesting is happening over there. Ready? Boom. There it is. This is VWAP, Volume Weighted Average Price, that blue line in the middle. The yellow line is about one standard deviation away from that, and the red line is about two standard deviations. Not exactly. I have very specific measurements, but that's the general idea, a couple of standard deviations away. And we are now at two standard deviations above, or the second deviation marker that I use above Volume Weighted Average Price. This morning during London, we went to below the average price during London. Asia was Asia. All right, we're going to watch this now. Bring you back to the main 
screen. We still have five minutes and 37 seconds left in the first 10 minute candle. I'm going to bring you back to just the 10 minute chart. I'm going to focus primarily on that for now because what I'm looking for is 10 minute reasons to enter and one minute reasons to refine or to confirm or deny those signals that we're getting from the 10 minute chart. do is put you on pause so that you don't have to deal with a sideways grind and I'll bring you back when something interesting happens. Here we go on pause now. All right guys I'm back and there's 45 seconds left in this candle on the 10 minute chart pushed up through into the third zone so pushed up into the second zone here from where we started the candle right one zone two zone three zones and now pulling back a little bit here nothing for me to do right now we're just going to watch Ten seconds left in this candle. Ten seconds left in this candle. Done. Now we're into the next candle. This first candle becomes my opening range, and this is a big one, folks. I mean, <laughs> sometimes the opening candle is only a, you know a few points. Uh, this one is large, and I typically don't trade while prices are still within the first ten-minute candle, and uh, that makes things awfully interesting here this morning. When we see that this candle is 76 points, I'll put you on mute for a second. All right, I had to check something. I had a ringing in my left ear and I wasn't sure where it was coming from. All righty. So, as I mentioned, the 10 minute candle becomes my opening range typically, and I typically don't take trades within it until things have broken out uh, significantly. But again, that is a large 77 point candle. Just gonna let my group know. Now breaking out to the upside, but still nothing for me. The gap has been closed. So it's important to realize that even after that very big push, uh, seemingly very big push on the open here in New York, the futures are still down a few points, basically flat, but down 16 points, so down 0.15%. Uh, 
So essentially have gone nowhere all day. We opened up here, we sold off down here over 100 points and then now we've rallied all the way back up to basically um, the open point, right? So um, that is the Dilio as we see it now. All right, so nothing's going on for me. I'm going to put you on pause again to save you the grind and we'll come back. Talk soon. Okay, guys, we're back. A number of minutes have passed now. And you can see that we had this 10 minute candle, the first one that closed, the next one that pushed up, but then reversed. It looked like it was pushing up very, very strongly. And this is the reason we wait, for, we wait for candles to close in the next zone before even considering a trade, because this was a reversal style candle, right? Not completely. And now we have a blue candle in the works way below the ultimate high. So now what I'm gonna do is to reframe our zones a little bit here. And I'm going to drop this one down to where the bodies were. I'm going to take out these uh, uh, arrows because we no longer need them. This gap indicator gone because the gap was closed. It's no longer relevant for the most part, right? And now we have a nice clean candle. And we have some messy stuff over here. So no arrow for me there. Waiting for this candle to form and to do its thing. I'm going to take you over to the one minute chart and show you what that looks like. Also going to eliminate this candle and this can, uh, sorry, not candle, uh, marker because they no longer matter as much. What I'm now more concerned about is this piece right here, because that's the next stop on the way down if this is coming down. If it's not, it's not it won't even be used. If the candle if price action and the candles do come down, we need to know where it's likely to stop next. That's why the revision up from down here to there. It was down here on the way up this way, right? Um, but now it's there. Okay. Four minutes and thirty seconds left in this candle. We'll be watching that very closely. And now I'm going to take you back to the one minute chart as well. We can see this kind of playing out together. Things are looking more interesting for me to the short side, quite frankly. Futures are now down 36 points or 0.3, one third, so one third of 1%, right? Markets are vulnerable. Had a little rally party there in the open. We'll see if this can be maintained. If not, we want to participate on the downside potentially. Just looking for ways to extract profits with the most certain move. And there are no certain moves in trading. You'll hear me repeat that phrase over and over again. But we're looking for the most certain move under the circumstances. All right push candle there, a little shift candle on the one minute chart. If you remember what VWAP looked like and why I showed it to you earlier is because of this. Look what's happened now at that two standard deviations, right? On the open thrust, we were able to, remember this is a one minute chart, right? So there's 10 candles in one 10 minute candle. On that opening candle, we were able to hit the the uh, two standard deviations even push a little bit higher but now faltering and typically what you will see is even they move all the way back to VWAP at the very least sometimes even lower but we'll wait and see if that is in the cards for us or not bring you back to the main screen focusing now on the 10 minute chart only looking for 10 minute reasons to enter before considering what the one minute chart is even doing if we don't have a 10 minute reason to enter, I'm not entering just because the one minute, re uh, the one minute uh, chart says something. For the most part, you will see me make exceptions. And when I do, I explain exactly why in very clear and specific detail on my videos. I'm gonna put you on pause for the next two minutes until this candle closes. And I'll bring you back to save you some time. Okay, I brought you back a minute early. I just wanted to show you what I am thinking here. I just wanna make sure you got enough notice here on this 
Although this is not a live stream as such, it's a live recording. Um, but I want to explain to you what I'm doing here, okay? That would be a sell stop order, but only under the right conditions. Or not there yet at all. As a matter of fact, this candle is looking a little bit strong here into the last minute. Forty-five seconds left. All right, new candle has begun. That pulled up real high. So now I'm trying to decide if I'm going to look towards longs or shorts. And that is a decision, I can tell you why. If this flipped white, this is actually a fairly strong setup for a thrust higher. If it turns blue and drops below, it's a fairly good setup for a short. So it can go either way. I'm gonna watch this now very closely. Kind of in no man's land right now. Yeah. Here's what I'm going to do. Watch closely now on the one minute chart. That's a three minute chart. I need the one minute chart, which is there. Sell stop limit right there. Sell stop order. One minute chart. Live, live sell stop. Measuring some things here. Yeah, target will be 20 points. Target 20 points. I'll show you why in a moment. One of my colleagues has been trading for quite some time just uh, texted me and messaged me and said, this is a super weird market again, isn't it? I said, yeah, it sure is. It's, uh, it's funky. Very indecisive at this point. And that might, might, might not make sense unless you're watching candle after candle, day after day in London and New York to get a feel for what that, what that means, but it's true. This order is still live here. I'm not in a trade. 
but that is a live stop sell order. We could activate it if prices broke below that white line or touch that white line. Four. So we're 34 minutes into the session. Cancelled. Sell stop cancelled. And now, all of a sudden, I'm looking for longs. But not yet. This is trading, guys. This is real trading, okay? Not getting wedded to a bias. This morning in London, I came in very similar setup as a matter of fact. I came in with a long idea, so it was the opposite, but came in with a long idea. I was about to enter long, flipped in an instant. And within two minutes, I was in a short and took that as a winner to the downside. Because everything we do when it comes to scalping and day trading is to constantly be incorporating new information being given to you by the markets in the form of candles, time and price. And in the stock market, you can include uh, volume action with that as well, meaning individual stocks in that case. Uh, guys, here we are. I'm actually going to put that sell order back again now. This is a good example of the back and forth, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. Being indecisive. If the market is being indecisive, you can be indecisive too. Don't apologize to anybody. We're dancing the dance the market brings to us. Watching closely now. Here we go. Interesting candle. Okay. It's an extension candle. I prefer a couple more here to its side and then, and then, uh, a break from there, but we might not get that. Watching closely now. Still not in. I will tell you when I'm watching on a different screen. It's this view up here. You see that? Pull back, rally attempt, and now potential break of structure. That break in stru of structure coincides with our entry point. Here. You see that? That is our entry point. So an easier way to show that would be, oops. Easier way to show that would be with this. And the intention would be to take this all the way back towards, towards view up at 719. Make sense?
Only if we get the break. I'll bring you back to the other slide now so we watch this happen in Technicolor. If you don't know what Technicolor means, it means you're not as old as me. That's almost all of you, I'm sure. <laughs> requiring a lot of patience here guys that's trading I have the patience do you some of you might say yeah I got the patience and that's awesome many of you don't and it's a struggle and I get it When I stopped seeking trades and started running a business, things changed for me. When I realized that making money in trading is not about actively trading, it's about pulling the trigger when the right things have come your way, right setups, optimal setups, and then managing those during the process, things changed. And that was a long, long time ago now. And now my, my goal is to instill that and install that into other traders so that we can take this nearly 100% losing rate in trading to somewhat higher winning rate. And that won't come from learning more technical analysis, I can promise you that. It'll come from everything in my mental game playlist on YouTube, my trading psychology mental game playlist, play it over and over again, internalize it, act upon it, and great things will happen. I can virtually guarantee you that. And it's for free, just because I like to share. I'm a lifelong teacher, but also a lifelong student. And it's just, it's just the way I'm wired. And so it's there for you, for the taking. YouTube channels was started last month, October, and I've already uploaded, recorded and uploaded over 200 videos. And so there's a huge library of um, live trading with full explanations, a lot of mental game material to understand that this is a, an impulse game, right? This is the game of impulse control. It is a psychological game, no matter what anybody tries to sell you or tell you, it is a game that's played inside of your head, between your ears. Yes, you do have to understand basic price action and how the capital markets function to a certain extent. Once you have that, you now have your tennis racket and tennis ball. That means you can play tennis and now it's not, but now it's got nothing to do with your racket and ball because you already have that. All right, I'm in this trade, just been triggered in. Now we're gonna manage this dynamically, watching closely now. Stop down to the top of that wick you see there on the one minute chart, you see that there? In other words, the previous candle high. Very high chance of being stopped out. You need to be okay with that. Very high chance. Here it comes. You ready for it? It'll be a nine point loss. Can you handle it? It's tiny. I just I just sliced that that loss in half, actually about 60% of what it was before. It's only 40% of what it was before. We're about to get tapped out, ready? Boom, okay. Nine point loss, 0.4R loss, 0.4R loss. All right, now I'm gonna put you on mute. I'm gonna see what else shows up here. I'll bring, uh, not on mute, I'm gonna put you on pause so you can avoid just sitting through this and we'll come back if anything else sets up. See you soon. Hey guys, I'm back here 
and I'm looking to take this same trade again. Watching closely now, ready? Entering on that same trade you see there. We, we, we haven't moved that marker, by the way. It's in exactly the same place. I'm gonna give it a second try. Waiting for it to get triggered in now, watching closely. Okay, I'm in. I'm back in now. Second chance. Now this is a 2R trade. I'm gonna bring it all the way up here because now VWAP has moved. I'll show that to you in a bit. This will be a 2R. So we're down 0.4R now for the New York session. We're way ahead on London with three wins in a row. Sorry, I'm just moving myself here in my chair. It's been a long morning. All right, it's 10.17 a.m. for me. Been up since 1 a.m. And of course, London opens at 3 a.m. for me. Watching now. I did go to the gym after my first, uh, my, 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 my three trades in, in uh, London. I was able to run out to the gym and uh, have a quick workout and then make my way back before the New York Open. Watching now. You see that 10 minute reason to enter on the on the 10 minute chart, obviously, hence the 10 minute reason. And now we're just watching the one minute here for refinements on that stop. But this time sizing bigger because of the uh, the fact that we're going for a uh, smaller point loss in the very first trade. Remember the first trade had a, had a stop that was up here, moved that down. So it was a 0.4 loss. And now we're risking um, 1R to make 2R on this one. Very, very sloppy action. Uh, this is a bizarre market, as I mentioned earlier, and other traders are messaging me with the same. Now you look, I mean, it looks fairly clean on the on the 10 minute chart, but when you look, understand the inner workings of these wicks. See that doji there? This is a whipping, these have whipping internals, and you can see that on the one minute chart. Very, very messy flurry of activity compared with the obviously the clean action you saw here in London, right? Nice and clean, nice and clean, even here, nice and clean. And now with all of these smaller bodies and wider wicks and no real sequential wave pattern to them, they're just kind of wishy washy doing whatever they want. This messiness in here can be very costly, and of course, it cost us already uh, 0.4 R as we try to uh, extract some profits here. We may get hit again, we'll see. Yeah, it's looking like there's a significant amount of buying coming in here, defending this area down here. Let's watch and see. I'll put you on pause, bring you back if anything interesting happens, here we go. All right, guys, a few minutes have passed. Here we go. Got a bit of a push down and we're done. Nicely done, guys. We were patient. We came back in and did it again. This is a 2R win, right? 18 points. We lost nine points in the first one, but sized bigger on the second one because it was a smaller uh, risk risk profile. And so uh, up point, oh, 1.6R on this after the 2R two, uh, two win and the 0.4R loss. Great to see you guys. Thanks for joining us. And I said see you because I know you're going to be in the comments making uh, comments about how much you're benefiting from, from, from these videos and from our conversations in the Telegram group. By the, by the way, guys, if you're not part of the Telegram group, come on by. It's free. Uh, if you have a good attitude, a positive attitude, you love to learn, love to teach, love to share, come on by. We'd love to have you. The uh, link is in the description, but it's uh, Zerillion Trading and Telegram. We'll see you a bit later, guys. Otherwise, we'll see you tomorrow in London and or New York. Take care. Have an amazing afternoon. Take care now.